This morning, Michael Jackson, not guilty on all counts. So Jackson's lead attorney, Tom Mesero, live on the victory and the party overnight at Neverland. And Jackson's journey. Michael Jackson, not guilty, all ten counts. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Robin. What a difference an hour makes in the life of Michael Jackson. He came to court facing terrible charges, charges that drained him of health and spirit. And then moments later, vindication, finally going home to Neverland to sleep, unburdened by the prospect of prison. A party at Neverland. Jackson family and attorneys celebrating complete victory immediately after the verdict. Lead Jackson attorney Tom Mesereau smiling broadly in full view of 300 fans outside the gates who were thrilled by the win, but disappointed Jackson made no personal appearance. We're asking everybody to leave the area. Mesereau's first public comment after the verdict, a quick declaration. Justice was done. The man's innocent. He always was. Justice. Inside court, there were tears in every corner from two of the jurors, Mother Catherine Jackson. Jackson's attorney Susan Yu was sobbing. And next to her, the defendant dabbing his eyes. ABC's Taina Hernandez was watching not 10 feet away. He started to cry more and more with each not guilty. There were more tears at one point. He even put both hands to his eyes to, to stop the flow. Not guilty 10 times. In fact, the jury confirmed, despite all the familiar faces like Jay Leno, Chris Tucker, and Macaulay Culkin, it was the woman who covered her face that sunk the prosecution case. The accuser's mother could not be believed, and her kids, who accused Jackson of child molestation, could not be trusted either. Some jurors said the mom made them feel uncomfortable. The mother, when she looked at me and snapped her fingers a few times, and she says, you know how our culture is, and winks at me. I thought, no, that's not the way our culture is. <laughs> it was a clear-cut verdict. Victory for Michael Jackson, a rebuke for the prosecution. Diane? All right, Jim, we thank you so much. Now we turn to the Michael Jackson jurors, the people who gave him his freedom. Joining us now, jury foreman Paul Rodriguez, also jurors L.A. Cook, Tammy Bolton, Melissa Harrard, Michael John Stevens, and alternate juror Joseph Castello. And again, we thank you all for coming in. It's a long night of flying, and we're grateful to you. Okay, first question. Second thoughts. Anybody here? No second, no second thoughts. thoughts. Did you ever, any one of you, raise your hand if you did, did any one of you ever think guilty? That came up quite a bit. But uh, after weighing the evidence and lack of, uh, we realized that um, there wasn't enough, enough evidence there to prosecute him. I wanted to ask about the mother, and, and, and you, Ms. Cook, specifically talked about her. You said at one point that she was sort of waving oh, her she, finger at you. And she snapped. And Show she, me what she did. Yeah. Just like that, and you don't snap your fingers at a jury. You snap your fingers to get a dog to mind you. She would look at the jury and then snap her fingers and say, you know, this is the way it should be. It should and be right in our faces. Yeah. Yes. That was very intimidating because I was directly, Mike and I were directly across from the witnesses. And she would turn right to us like she's just, you know. But, Melissa, what did that us. say to you? I mean, apart from how it made you feel, what did that say to you about what, who she was and the testimony she gave? Um, her testimony, a, a lot of the parts of her testimony, I wanted to just break out laughing, but I couldn't, you know. It, her, uh, um, she was up and down, up and down, and the parts that I felt that she should have been more, you know, mm -hmm. more emotional about, she wasn't. It, so it's just not credible, you're saying? In no. the beginning, pictures we saw of her, when she was uh, did the Michael Jackson rebuttal thing, uh, she had her hair done, she had makeup on, and she was a most attractive woman. When she came into court, she looked like Mother Teresa after a bad brain. Bad. <laughs> meaning, meaning, meaning. She looked drained. Her hair was straight. She didn't have any makeup on. So you on. thought that was false, she was trying or? to play. She was trying to be pitiful to us. I felt. But but what does this have to do with her son's testimony? I mean, how what? Did, did you do you worry in any way? Do you worry that how you felt about her in some way influenced how you felt about his testimony? Did you feel no. he was lying? <laughs> did you feel the son was lying? Um, I yeah. thought he was going to answer. Oh. Go ahead, Mike. Um, yeah, there, there were there were times you could tell, but I mean, it all had to go back to the evidence. So I mean. It's like right there, the evidence, you know, it's, you have to go beyond a reasonable doubt. 
I don't think the mother inflicted good values in her kids, and that made me have a hard time believing anybody in the family. Big question about celebrity. As we know, Thomas Snedden came out and said the thing he'd learned about this was celebrity, celebrity influences. Are you sure? Are you sure that this gigantically renowned guy walking in a room had no influence at all? We talked about that right. when we first started um, the trial. Mm -hmm. And when we went into deliberations, that came up. We talked about that quite intensively, I think. And uh, we all felt that we have to look at this man just like we would anybody else, you know, just anyone off the street, anyone in particular, you know, just not look at him as a celebrity. In fact, as the trial was going yeah. on, we really didn't uh, pay much attention to him. Once in a while, you would look at him to see his demeanor, to see what he was, yeah. he had certain questions or testimony yeah. that was been presented. But At first, it was kind of intimidating, uh, somewhat. I mean, to be honest, it was. But for sitting there for four months and watching him every day, and I came to realize that, you know, he's a person, he's a human. And to me, that just the celebrity status just went out. He's, a, he's a, just another person. You study his face, any of you, at the all moment the, the not guilty verdict came in? Well, I kind of lost see? it there. What do you mean? I mean, I was crying because oh, yes. I was watching it. <laughs> I was we heard busy. That. Well, it started because. Um, um, the other lawyer for Michael Jackson lost it. When she lost it, I lost it. Because she was so, throughout the whole trial, she would look at the witnesses, yes. not move. She would just stare at them the whole time. She never slept. And um, she was always so alert and everything. And then to see, my gosh, her emotions just come pouring out. I. Uh, that was just oh any of the rest of you see anything in his face at that moment what did you see? he looked over at us in yeah. fact uh, I made eye contact with him when the last part of the verdict was read and he kind of just mouthed he didn't openly say but he just kind of like said you know to me too mm -hmm. and there were some tears I yeah, he was yeah. Crying. You could tell yeah he was crying he was crying a little bit yeah, I, I want to ask, and again, I know I, I know what I'm wandering in here when I ask this, Joseph, and you're, uh, that you're an alternate, you're a college student, you, but you listen to every single part of, of this testimony, and everybody always thought, because they were surprised there were no more African Americans on the jury, everyone always wondered if it would have been any different. I mean, not everyone wondered, but I guess people who, who assume sort of racial stereotypes. Just want to know from you how you felt about this verdict all the way going through so that everybody out there can hear that. Well, when it first started, I felt really bitter because I was the only black African American. I wasn't even a juror, I was an alternate. That's what really made me mad. But then when it came to the end where we had to leave, I, I decided myself because I, I developed friendship throughout the whole 20 jurors that, um, that you just need to. I, I, I trusted them. I really did trust them. And when I left, I, I thought to myself that. That um, whatever verdict that they come up with, I'll, I'll stand 100% behind because I know that they'll do the right thing. We had 100 page instructions. I'm pretty sure you, it's a tight fit. You don't have to go by what the judge says. Right. And second, but one of the things you've talked about surprised some people is that in your own family you have someone who is a registered sex offender, and you said that this gave you more understand, more fairness in the case. They, that was rather misquoted. I have a grandson that was 18, was out with a bunch of boys streaking. He was the only one that was 18. And someone dared him to flash instead of streak. He flashed, he got caught, and that's a felony. And so for the next, for, at, from the, and he was 18, and that's his sex offense. I want to talk about a final word here about all of you together. and. Uh, a quick word from Melissa Vacan and also from Michael. Y you were the readback guy. Yeah. I watched yesterday. Each of you had an assignment, and you read back pages of the almost judges. Almost 100 pages. Yeah. Almost 100 pages yeah. of the judges' testimony. But at the end of the day, can we assume the jurors are like this, where they come to respect each other? They raise their hands. They don't argue. Yeah. What happened here? We did, and if we got out of hand. Paul was there to <laughs> ring the bell, or whoever had the bell. They would ring the bell. 
when they had enough. We only had to ring that bell about three or four times. We did pretty good, I yeah. think. We only used the timer Keep, once. Keeping things Everybody under control. Three minutes. Well, you're much better behaved than all of us in Good Morning America. I just want to say. And we, again, we thank Welcome to Paul Rodriguez, the Jackson jury foreman. So you're the foreman, and as the foreman, you... You decided, I understand, to take kind of a straw poll of what everybody thought. I think we were almost a split vote at that time. Six against, six for. But now this woman that we call the grandma, mm -hmm. what did she do? Okay, right about in there somewhere, she uh, leaned over the table, start beating the table, and she says, by God, he, and three or four times, I mean really heavy, this man is guilty, and no one's going to change my mind about this. He is guilty as ever, and that's it. I've made my decision. And she says this at the beginning, before there's ever deliberations? Right, exactly. I've never been in a deliberation room, so I, and neither have any, most of the You don't viewers, want to go there. You don't want to go there. <laughs> but I do want to go there. I want to take our viewers there. How often did you look at that in the jury room, and how important was that to you as the deliberations progressed? Actually, that tape became very important. We felt that we had um, reached some kind of conclusion on most of the issues, the 14 counts against him. But that tape, for some reason, we just couldn't agree on. I don't know if we watched it four, five, six times, but we did watch it because uh, the last time we watched it, we decided, okay, why are we watching this again? What are we looking for? And most of us felt the same way, that we were looking for his demeanor. Uh, how was his body? Was he you know, moving around a lot? Was he nervous? Was he anxious? And he didn't seem to come across that of anyone, someone that had been molested. He told the police in his initial interview he believed it was four or five times that he was molested. Later on the witness stand, it became one or two times. Right. That's a huge and problem. We talked about that, and, and all of us felt the same way. We felt that this kid's lying. You know, he really is lying about what's going on. Through his teeth yeah. lying. So anyway, the more we listened to all this, the more we felt that they don't have a case. Let me ask you, though. In the Bashir outtake footage, because we've got some of that here, and it's never been seen before, what, what was your reaction to that? Because I felt I got to know Michael personally through those outtakes. Right, that's probably the only time we really felt like we got to know a little bit more about Michael Jackson, and that's part of what we uh, talked about in deliberations. We felt that Michael was a, still a kid in a man's body, and we felt that the Bashir tape, if he could air it the way he wanted to air it, he would make millions on it, which I'm sure he did. We felt that this guy is another gold digger. He's using Michael Jackson to lure him in, get him to say what he wants him to say, because that's what people will buy. Everything that I do is inspired from the children. You know, and uh, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If it wasn't for the children, I'd throw in the towel. I've been able to sleep at night, and so did the, have the other jurors, because we all felt we came to the right conclusion. Thank the you, right Paul decision. Rodriguez. Thank you. It's a pleasure.